All right, Becca, thank you. Well, it is April and it's Financial Literacy Month. It is a great time to kind of refresh our knowledge about our financial health and who better than to talk about it. It's Lena from Bank of America. She's with us once a month now. So it's really fun yes. to have you in here. Thanks so much for coming in. You've got some easy to follow tips for the entire family, yep. both the parents and the kiddos. That's right. Um, so let's talk a little bit about fin financial literacy, kind of what it is and just why it's so important. Yes. Yeah, so April is financial literacy month. And just like with many things, the more that we know, the better we educate ourselves, um, especially about our financial health, the better off we'll be in the long run. And, you know, less stress, always a good thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> so recent Bank of America t uh, data tells us that retirement savings have been trending down over the last couple years. So this is a great time for a refresher on some savings tips, right? Mm. And thinking about how we can build a more financially healthy life and implement some habits to kind of make that consistent and support is really important. So we can take a look at how to build those habits into our day to day. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about saving. Uh, yes. Of course, very important. It's one of the most key financial uh, components of just having good finances. So what is kind of the first few steps you would recommend to get started? Yes, saving? first few things. So what has the last three years taught us is really important to have an emergency fund. And we've talked about this before. Um, we really, we got to figure out how do we build an emergency fund, right? So good rule of thumb is to have three to six months worth of emergency savings um, set aside. And the more the better, but three months is always a good start. Really simple way to do this is start small and make your withdrawals into your saving automatic mm, because it sure. reduces the temptation to sort of spend that money on other things. Um, start off with one month of expenses and then work your way up from there. Those automatic savings or automatic transfers from your checking to your savings are, it's gonna be a game changer for you yeah. preparing. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I like that tip about just starting with one month because yes. three to six can sound a little bit scary. Oh, it us. is, yeah. Um, what about, do you have any tips on kind of calculating your expenses to make sure you're saving for that emergency fund? Absolutely, so if you have a good budget, then this is gonna be super easy. If you don't, that's okay. It's never a bad time to start with budgeting. So really simple thing to do is look at what your essentials are. So your rent or your mortgage, a car payment, your groceries, your utilities, gas if you have a car add all of those up and multiply that by the number of months that um, you want to start working mm -hmm. towards mm -hmm. it's really really simple a um, couple things to think about though is you know what do you define as an essential right mm -hmm. you know maybe Starbucks <laughs> every day is not necessarily an essential <laughs> yes exactly exactly yeah, yeah something to think about for sure now yeah. I will say me personally my parents never really spoke to me about money or finances growing up so when do you think that conversation should when should you start having those conversations with your kids you know making saving a family affair is really important right it's a great opportunity to implement those good habits for your kids right um, so a survey from 2020 showed that half of Millennials did not start budgeting until they were in college and that number is probably even bigger for my generation mm -hmm. um, but there are fun ways to involve your kids early on as early as four years old which is really great we're gonna talk about the three piggy banks yes. the, and we're gonna follow the spend save share method awesome and you have some tips for kind of breaking this down and making it a little bit easier for kids to understand yes um, super easy so we've got three piggy banks instead of just one right yeah. we're gonna give kids three we're gonna do one for spending one for saving and one for giving so every time your kiddo receives cash allowance odd jobs birthday money uh, the tooth fairy just recently yeah. visited us at our house <laughs> um, so whatever that is allocate talk to them about allocating a percentage to each piggy bank um, an easy rule of thumb is 10 10 80 so 10 for saving 10 for giving and 80 for spending now that seems like a lot it's mm. all gonna be relative to how old your kid is what their goals are what their priorities are and you're gonna want to sit down with your children and talk about what those things are so if you have an older child who's saving for something big like a car or uh -huh. something like that you're gonna change what those numbers look like and sure. it's a really great way to sort of you know talk about math and percentages um, and you can have them you know maybe write it down or make a picture of something that they're mm -hmm. working towards mm -hmm. which is really great and it is really fun actually it is. Yeah. I love the physical piggy bank yeah. because you don't really see these as yeah. often anymore we have yeah. digital banking now and so. for kids having something that they can touch and and look and say oh my gosh this one's getting really full I'm getting close to my goal is really exciting Love for them it. all right thank you so much for thank these you. tips Lena Absolutely. thanks for coming in Absolutely. again April is financial literacy month so all month long we are talking about making some good money habits all right we'll be right back